I'm excited today to share with you guys the top 12 beekeeping tips, hacks, and breakthroughs that you guys told me you enjoyed most in 2022. Hi, I'm David Burns. If this is your first time to stop in on my channel, thanks a lot. And if you're a loyal viewer of my channel, I appreciate having you back. Let's get right into the tips. Have you ever had that moment when you got your new package and you're looking at your queen cage, you see the candy plug, but you know that it has too much candy in it. I mean, sometimes the bees have been with that queen long enough. It's time to loosen up that candy a little bit or take about half of it out, maybe all of it sometimes, I understand that. So what do I do to get rid of that candy? Or sometimes there's a cork protecting the candy. Well, what I use is a drywall screw. It's simple just to take a really small screw and just screw it into that cork, remove the cork, and that way you expose the candy in the queen cage, or go ahead and remove whatever amount of candy you want to. Usually I'll remove about half of it. And that way the bees have better access to get to the queen a little faster since they're already so familiar with her. Now, some of you guys told me this spring that you had people that gave you packages of bees that did not have any candy in them at all they just had a cork plug in the end or something and you were like what do I do now should I just directly release my queen into my package this is tip number two what I suggest you do if you get a package of bees and the queen is just behind a cork and no candy you need a little candy in there I don't really feel comfortable with a direct release sometimes it might work why take the chance let's go ahead and get a marshmallow and put a marshmallow part of a marshmallow to plug that hole. That way the bees can remove or eat through that candy just a little while, while they get more familiar with your queen. And while we're on the subject of queen cages, tip number three, which way should you hang a queen cage? With the hole facing up, sideways, or down? Well, in a video that I did this summer, we did a little experiment, aha! We found that putting the queen cage up really does help accelerate her getting out of that cage. I do see the queen has worked her way up to the candy into the tube. Here she comes and she's out just like that. Sometimes the dead bees are in the ways. They'll remove them. So no matter which direction you place it, it's probably going to work out fine. Well, you don't want this phone call. An aggravated neighbor calling you on the phone saying, your bees are in my swimming pool again. Get them out of my pool or get them out of my dog dish. Your bees are taking over my property. Why is that? This is tip number four. What do you do? Well, you need to provide water for your bees on your property to keep them out of the pools of your neighbors. Here's how you do it. Set up a bird bath, put some water in it. Well, guess what? They kind of like the pool better because maybe a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of minerals that are splashing up onto the sidewalks around the pool. What you do, you bait your water trough, your bird bath with water for your bees with a little sugar. Yeah, just put a little sugar in there, get the bees kind of going to your water bath, and then you can stop feeding them sugar once they know where the water is. This will make you and your neighbors much happier. I don't know any beekeeper that don't want to save a buck or two. And this is more like a hack. Number five tip is don't buy a fume board when you can just use a towel. Spray your little uh, bee fluid on there to run the bees out of your honey super. A towel works just as good. And in my experience, a little more controllable. Now, we all want our bees to expand quickly, draw out all those honey supers, and produce us a lot of honey. But guess what? So many people, and I've experienced, tell me, hey, my bees aren't going up into my honey super. They're not drawing out the comb in my honey super. What's going on? First question I ask them, did you put a queen excluder on? Yeah. Well, listen, let's hold off on the queen excluder. Tip number six, don't put your queen excluder under your honey super until your bees are becoming familiar with it and start to draw out uh, some of those frames up there. And then you can slip in your queen excluder under that honey super, making sure the queen's not there. That will accelerate the bees getting up there, drawing out the comb. They can't put any honey up there. So the comb is drawn out. We're halfway through our tips. So many good ones coming up. I hope you enjoyed them so far. And if you have, please subscribe. And also give me a thumbs up right now. Tell me you like this video. Hit that like button. It helps me so much. So frustrating when you can't find your queen. Tip number seven. I want to help you mark your queen. A lot of people are experimenting with trying to use marker pens, marking their queen. This year, I had so many people tell me they drowned their queens in paint from the marker pen. Got a tip for you. 
Once you're familiar with marking your queens, hold the queen up in the air like this and have the pin facing upward. That way, if the paint is going to flood out on that felt tip too quickly, it won't flood out on the queen. It's just going to go back on or stay on that pin, saving your queen, saving your colony. Now it's going to be much easier to find your queen. If you kept bees very long, you'll notice that your equipment is starting to look kind of bad. Maybe some people are telling you, oh, you need to paint your boxes or look how cracked this is. It's amazing how fast our beekeeping equipment can deteriorate. And so those cracks will just get worse and worse as water gets in there, swells them up in the corners, corners break off, our hive tools are damaging it. This is tip number eight. It works great if you're building your own equipment or you're painting it and you bought it kind of raw, not painted yet. Look at this. Take some 100% silicone and seal up your edges really well. Once the silicone has dried, now you can take your paint, paint the box. It's going to last a lot longer keeping that weather out. Now, if you have a hive that's already painted and you're starting to see some of these cracks and crevices develop, eh, use silicone anyway. Chances are once you fill these cracks with this silicone and let it dry, paint over it, it's going to be just as good. Helping your equipment last a lot longer. Have you ever been frustrated trying to find the right way to test for mites? You're trying to get a, maybe a canning jar, some hardware screen, 1 8 hardware screen from the who knows where. Maybe you can get it at the hardware store or something, maybe not. But it's hard to make your own little testing device. Well, tip number nine, pretty awesome. Look at this. The Saracel Varroa Test Mite Kit, really nice, comes with a little basket inside, a little 300 B scooper, get the measurement just right, test for mites with this, and this is something that you guys really enjoyed learning about in 2022. I have links to these things in my description below, so please check it out, but this is tip number nine. It's really a great way to test for mites. Now, maybe you have your new package installed or your nucleus going really strong, you're in a deep box, they're just expanding really well. Time to add a second box so you put the next brood box on top. They never go up. Why won't they go up? <laughs> so frustrating. What can you do to encourage them to move upward? Hey, this is tip number 10. Works great. I do it all the time. All you have to do is go out to the bottom deep, take the frame out of the middle, the one that's drawn out the most, hopefully with some open larvae on it. This is going to contain nurse bees. Move that frame up to that new deep box on top or your new brood box on top, and then put a blank frame in, in the middle there so they can draw that out. Now, this is going to encourage your bees to go up because you have brood up above them. They have to take care of that. As those bees start moving up on that uh, next box on top, they're going to expand out a lot faster. This is a way to bait the box you're putting on top. This happens so often to beekeepers in the spring. So many people reported this and asked me what they're supposed to do. Tip number 11, a lot of beekeepers don't know how to prevent a swarm. I mean, do any of us, but they're going to swarm, right? Because a healthy colony is going to reproduce. And when they do, they could die or you could lose your honey crop from the year. And what I mean by that is they could die by swarming if they fail to raise a, a queen like they're supposed to and you fail to catch it. They just dwindle down without replacing the queen when the mother queen swarmed away or sometimes so many bees swarm that they never really build up steam again to make enough honey that year. A lot of times we like to prevent them from swarming and here's a way to do it. Let's say you're looking at your hive and you notice queen cells, swarm cells. 10, 15, 20 cells all over the lower part of those frames. That's how you know they're swarm cells and not supersede your cells. What do you do? If you catch it early enough, like you're supposed to be doing as a good beekeeper, inspecting your colony every two weeks, guess what? When you see those queen cells and you still see your queen in there, maybe you've marked her and you know that's her, all you need to do, listen to this, slip the queen excluder between the bottom board and your deep. The queen can't leave, so the swarm won't leave either. If they even try to swarm, they'll go back because mama's not with them. And now you have time to do something with all of those queen cells, like maybe make mating nooks or put them in other hives that might need them or make a split, use them in a split. Meanwhile, you can trim off all the queen cells that are going to be developing and you can make your own split with that mama queen into another colony, saving all those bees. But the tip you guys love the most in 2022 is this. The window veil. I showed you how I took a piece of plastic and 100% silicone, cut out my veil and just glued in this window. 
Now this worked so great, it was amazing. And you saw me in this most of the summer. You can see so much better in the summer, looking for the queen, trying to see if you have eggs, if you're looking through a clear window, rather than this kind of mesh on the side that's black. So this is a good way to do it. It's a simple do-it-yourself method. These are available, a lot of people sell these, but hey, you know, beekeepers are resourceful, do it yourself. Now guys, if you have enjoyed my 12 tips that I've given you best for 2022, I hope you'll look at this December tips, what you should be doing in the month of December. I'll see you over there.